what a blessing to see the last the month of 2023. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ, who is a wonderful counselor, the Alpha and Omega, the mighty God, the everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord, for your great love, great mercy, and your great faithfulness shown to us in 2023. Be exalted and be magnified in December 2023 as we call your kingdom to come and pray for your will to be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the blood of Jesus Christ wash us as we repent of our sins and forgive those who have offended us. For as many as have received Jesus Christ, you have given them power to become sons of God. Therefore, with thanksgiving, we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and speak life, healing, joy, hope, and salvation into the season of December 2023 in the name of Jesus Christ. We occupy our kingdom positions of authority of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, and declare by the blood of Jesus that demonic cycles of untimely death depression and suicide are destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind the spirit of oppression, idolatry, paganism, deception, witchcraft, terror and destruction in the name of Jesus Christ and loose righteousness and truth. Let the peace of Jesus Christ rule over December 2023, overthrowing grief, anxiety, mental oppression, frustration, disappointment, discontentment, uh, murmuring and complaining in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your goodwill for men to be saved manifest in this month and let souls be added to the church daily as are to be saved. Many souls shall repent, uh, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the sick shall be healed by the stripes of Jesus, and broken hearts, lives, and families shall be mended in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you are our shepherd. Therefore, all our needs shall be supplied according to your riches in glory, and daily the Lord shall load us with benefits and blessings without sorrow. By the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ, we declare that we shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Where sin abounds, let grace continue to much more abound, to overpower and overrule iniquity. Let goodness and mercy go before us into 2024, as we declare we enter 2024 in victory, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, give us vision for 2024 and cause us to be established in perfect love so that fear, doubt, and unbelief will be cast out and we will thrive and abound with wisdom and understanding in the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ, with mighty triumph over death and hell, you have already spoiled principalities and powers and made an open show of them. Therefore, we rebuke and bind principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every power be subject to the higher power of the Lord Jesus. For the gates of hell shall not prevail against your people, and it shall not prevail against our prayers. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and all the glory, both now and forever, in the almighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we all unmute and just say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're going to do that together. 
I'm only one person I heard. So after two, one, two, let's unmute and say in the name of Jesus. 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 All right, babies. It's not a good way to start today. We're going to do this one more time. I'm going to ask everybody to come to their devices and open your device. Go ahead and open your device and I'll give you the charge when to say in Jesus' name. Can we all just open our devices? All right, come on. After two, one, two, go ahead. In the name, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. I greet you, Lady Mitchell. I greet you. All the children that are here today, I greet those that are on social media. Excuse me. Hello. Kiss. Yes, I was saying that as you're about to say it, I got kicked out. Can I say it now? Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus, our soon and coming King. Can we just close our eyes? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another Saturday afternoon, Lord God, to come into your presence. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you have kept us another week. We thank you that you have been good to us, Lord Jesus. Your mercies are everlasting and your truth endureth to all generations. We thank you, Lord God, that you, Lord God, are our strength and our shield and our hiding place, Lord, as we are embarking on this gathering today with our children. We pray, God Almighty, that you will lead us, guide us, and protect us, Lord God that you will be our shield and buckler, God. Cover all the platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Zoom, Lord God. Cover all the devices today. Father, we ask for sweet fellowship today, Lord God. Have your way with us as we say thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord God bless you. Welcome, welcome, Sister Cass. Welcome. Hallelujah. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praises this evening. So I say good evening, Facebook, good evening, YouTube, and those of you that are here with us on Zoom, we greet you all in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to share the scripture for today, and I'm going to ask a few helpers to help us to read the this scripture. It will be Psalm 19. So those of you that will be helpers, all right, I see the ends. Beautiful. All right, go ahead, Sir Bent. Close it or wait, where do you want me to read from? Well, I see no other hand right now, so I'll have you read all of it. All right. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he said a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth, rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. He's go, his going forth is from the end of heaven and a circuit unto the ends of it. There's nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes, and the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me 
for secret faults. Keep, yeah, keep back thy servants also from presumptions, sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Can everyone say, let the words of my mouth, let the words of my, the words of my, the mouth. Of my mouth, and the meditation of my heart, and the meditation, and the meditation of my heart, be acceptable, be acceptable. acceptable. In thy sight, in thy sight, in thy sight. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, my strength, my strength, and, and my redeemer. redeemer. Yes, my redeemer. amen. Glory be to God. That is such a very powerful prayer, and I absolutely love it. And I love that David penned it right after he talked about the majesty and the glory and the excellency of God. So in all things, God is lifted up and magnified. And we want to give him the glory, honor, and praises today for all the wonderful things that he has done for us. You know, none of it is us. All of it is him. And so we praise him today. Hallelujah. So we're going to be praising God for real. And so I'm going to ask you all to do it individually because it seems when we do it together, collective as a group, because of the timing, some people are lagging behind. So we want you to shout a praise. It doesn't have to be that big, loud praise, but one that's coming from your heart. So I'm going to start with Sir Bent. Can you give the Lord a praise from your heart? Hallelujah, God, you're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love that. My God, Sir Rashim. Hmm? Can you give the Lord a praise from your heart? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Sir Joshua Maga, can you give the Lord a praise from your heart? Hallelujah. Glory. Lady Camelia, can you sing a wonderful praise to the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 He is wonderful. Thank you, Sister Camelia. Lady Kelani. Can you give the Lord a praise from your heart? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for this wonderful day. And thank hallelujah. you for all you have done for us. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Birthday boy. Still celebrate his birthday past this week. We're going to sing for him. But nonetheless, can you unmute and give God a praise from your heart, Sir Cameron? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love it. Sir Case, can you unmute and give God a praise from your heart? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sister Cass, can you unmute and give God a praise from your heart? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all, all that is within me. Bless His oh, oh, holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah, glory be to God, I love it, it just sounds so sweet, I don't know if you guys are hearing it, you know, but the praises are so sweet, my God, thank you Sister Cass, Evangelist Coda, can you unmute and give God a praise from your heart? Oh, how I love you, oh my Oh, I adore him. He's my breath, my sunshine, a kosher time, my all in all. 
the great creator who is my savior makoshatai and all god's fullness dwelleth in him Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, that is my love song to the Lord. Whenever I get to a really good place with the Lord, that just starts flowing out of me. And the next song that is my praise song to him is um, this one. It says, oh Lord, why all of a sudden the, 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 the words is... Okay. Hallelujah, the glory. Hallelujah, amen. For Jesus who died is now gone above. I can't remember it, mighty God, but it's it's my go-to song. Anytime I'm in a real good place of worship, these songs just start pouring out of me. And so I want to give God glory, honor, and praises right now. Hallelujah. 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 He is wonderful. Glory be to God. We praise God today. You know, so many different victory pray um, testimonies has been coming to us from persons who were praying unto the Lord and God just showed up, you know, because he is that kind of a God that is able to handle any situation. And so today my soul is just indicting a good matter because God is big and exalted. Hallelujah. And there's nothing that is able to withstand him. And so we praise him today. We honor him today. We lift him up today and we worship him today. Who inside here is happy to be alive, to be given one more opportunity to praise God? Who here is happy? Me. Oh, I was about to say. No one else? Yes, me. me. Oh, I'm very much happy. Yes. Thank you. You guys are so very stoic today. I'm expecting you to say, Me. I am happy. So I am happy. Hallelujah. And I give God all glory, honor, and praises today. You know, it's been such a very long time since we have come back into our program as we have known it with our testimonies and our songs of Thanksgiving and all of that. And we're going to be coming back to it. But for today, I am going to ask, is there anyone here that has a song that they want to share with everyone or a testimony that they want to share? Please feel free to do so at this time and do not be um, shy in doing it. Anyone, go ahead, Sister Camelia. Toiling on, toiling on, toiling on, toiling on, let us hope, let us watch and pray and labor to the master call. Toiling on, toiling on, toiling on, toiling on. Let us hope, let us watch and pray, and never to the master come. Love that song. My God, toiling on. Mighty God. Can we unmute and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for that song, Sister Camelia. I'm going to ask you to send me the words of it and sing it for me so I can get that tune. I love that song. Go ahead, Sir Bent. Um, I have a testimony. So, 
Yes, I just want to thank God for keeping me alive, for making all my body functions work properly. And I just want to thank him because I believe it was two days ago. So like I had nasal congestion and my arm was hurting me. And sometimes when you even really think about it, when you're well and nothing's wrong with you, it's a true blessing because when you're sick, it just feels so uneven. So I just want to thank God for keeping me alive and for, yeah, just keeping me alive. I just want to thank him. My God, I love that. And it is wonderful. It said it's true. When you're whole, all things work together. But when you get sick, the body becomes disjointed. And that's when you realize that you truly, truly value the function of your body. My God, he's all over me and he's keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. He is all over me and he's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Oh, he's the Holy Ghost on fire, and he's keeping me alive, keeping me alive, keeping me alive. He's the Holy Ghost on fire, and he's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Thank the Lord for you, Sir Bent. Go ahead, Sister Kehlani. So this is like one of my favorite gospel songs, and I would love to share it with you. Let the fire of my house never come down. The fire of my house never come down. Let the fire of the house never come down. Lord, make me a house of rest. Hey, Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of rest. I want to seek your face, hey, seek your face, so Lord, make me a house, make me a house of rest. I want to seek your face, yes, yeah, seek your face. Ah, uh, Sister Kelani, that's just such a powerful song by Eddie James. I love it. It's in my playlist. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. A house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. A house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. May it be a house of prayer. My God. Sister Kehlani, that's a very deep song. You know that the house of the Lord was to the Jews a place of prayer. The Lord says that our bodies are his temple. And today your prayer is let this temple be a house of prayer and not idleness. My God, beautiful, mighty God, I love it. Is there anyone else with a song or a testimony before we go into our proceedings for the day? Any other person? All right, no other songs, no other testimony. I'm going to ask who knows the theme song for this group. We have a theme song. Yes, we do. Who wants to sing that theme song for Sir Rashim? All right, go ahead, Sir Ben. Thank you. I'm a promise. I'm a possibility. I'm a promise. Wait, oh my gosh, I forgot it. No way. No way. I, I promise. I'm a possibility. I am a promise. I promise. I am a possibility. Oh, I literally can't. 
Can Kalani sing it? I cannot believe I forgot it. That's okay, because guess what? I didn't remember my song that I normally praise the Lord with too. So it happens. Sometimes you get that strange moment of blankness. That's all right. Go ahead, Sister Kalani. I actually have another song I want to sing. Okay, just before you sing that song, do you know what the theme song is? No? I didn't even know we have a theme song. Oh, okay. So put a pause on the song you're going to sing. You're going to come right after Sister Camelia. She's going to sing the theme song for us, okay? So you all will know what the theme song is. And then I'm coming back to you, Sister Keilani. Go ahead, Sister Camelia. I am a promise, I am a possibility, I am a promise, promise with a capital P. I am a great big brother, potentiality, oh yes. And I'm learning, learning, we hear God's voice and I'm trying, trying to make the right choice. I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Camelia. So, Sir Rasheem, you now know the theme song. Lady Kelani, you now know the theme song. I am a promise and a possibility to be anything God wants me to be. So, don't ever limit yourself because you can do exploits through God. All right? Go ahead, Sister Kelani, with your second song. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. God, yes, Sister Kelani, yes, beautiful. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. Powerful, my God, I just love it. I really love coming on to children's ministry. You know, you guys are, are going to be powerful, powerful servants of the Most High God. And I want to encourage you to keep on going. Those that are on YouTube, those that are on Facebook, we encourage you as well. We may not be able to hear you like we're hearing these ones on Zoom, but we do know that the Lord is doing something in our children and give God thanks for it. So who is ready for quiz? It is now quiz time. We're going to have some games and then we're going to go into discussion. So who is ready for the quiz? Anyone excited for that? Ready as ever, Sir Ben says. Me, 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 me. All right. I like that. Me, 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 me. Anyone Let's else? Be ready here. Uh, okay. I love it. But just before we share the screen, thank you, Sir Rashid. There is a special young man in our midst that had his birthday this week, and we want to sing happy birthday to him. Hallelujah. Who knows who this person is? Sir Cameron. Yes. Yes, yes. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Brother Cameron. I'm going to ask um, everyone to unmute and just let's sing happy birthday to him. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Cameron. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday, Sir Cameron. We hope that your day was beautiful. You know, that you felt the love. You got a lot of good food and gifts. And we want to say thank God for you. We pray that he'll bless you to see many, many more 
and bless you with good health and strength and all academic success. God bless you, Brother Cameron. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So we're going to be going into our quiz today. All right. All right. Let's share this screen. Let's minimize this. I don't want you guys to have any sight of what the word the, the slides are saying. All right. Games and trivia. Roll. Okay, so the rules of this game is that you're going to raise your hand and wait to be identified. All right, once you're identified, then you can go ahead and respond. And you have 30 seconds to respond, okay? First question, first set of games is I have who has. So I'm going to read what I have and then I'm going to ask a question and whoever knows that answer is going to raise their hand, okay, and give the answer. I have Noah, who has someone who was in the belly of a whale. All right. Go ahead, Sir Bent. So Cameron raised his hand first, but Jonah. Okay. I saw your name first. I have to go with the names that I saw first. All right, so Jonah, that is correct. So, Sir Cameron, I'm gonna have you, um, Sir Bent, I'm gonna have you read the next card because you had Jonah. You're gonna read this, and the next person that has the answer raise their hands. All right, so go. Don't raise it yet, Sir Ray, Rashim. Wait for the question I, to be read. I have Jonah. Who has the queen that saved Israel? All right, Sir Case. Ruth. Incorrect. Sir Maga. Esther. Esther. Very good. All right, Laurel and everyone. Go ahead, Sir Maga. Read this next slide. I have Esther, the boy with the coat of many colors. Who has the boy with the coat? Okay. All right. Go ahead, Sir Bent. Joseph. Joseph. Correct. All right. You're going to read the next um card. I'm going to ask you guys, please don't raise the hands as yet until the question is read. All right. Go ahead, Sir Bent. I have Zacchaeus. Who has the man that spent three days in the pastor in the belly of a big fish? Okay, go ahead, Sir Case. Jonah. Jonah, correct. All right, Sir Case, you're going to read this slide. I have Eve. Who was the man that climbed the tree to see Jesus? All right, go ahead, Sir Maga. Zacchaeus, very good, very good. All right, Laurel Hans. Read from it, please. I have Daniel, who has someone who parted the Red Sea. All right, go ahead, Sir Case. Moses. Moses, very good. All right. Read the next slide, please, Sir Case. I have Moses. Who has someone that who died on the cross for my sins? All right, go ahead, Sir Cameron. Jesus. Jesus. Very good. Very good. All right. Now we are going to go into the next set of questions. This section is called Riddle Me This and Riddle Me That. All right. Now, there was a time in Jamaica when we used to have on the Kool-Aid packets a little bit of Riddle Me This and a Riddle Me That. And you had to solve it. And over time, you could save up and get a, a prize. There is no prize here today. But we are going to go into Riddle Me This and Riddle Me That. All right. Wait for the question to be read and then you raise your hand. Riddle, I am colorful and seen across the sky. I only can be seen on a drizzling day and not night. Some people believe 
that I was first spotted after the floods of Noah. What am I? Go ahead, Sir K. Sir Rashimi, raise your hand too quick. Rainbow. The rainbow. Very good. All right. I raised my hand too quickly. Sir Rashim. Sir Rashim. All right. So wait until the, the, the question is completely read, guys. Then you raise your hands. Okay. All right. Next riddle. I am something you may read. When you're sitting in a pew, I contain two testaments, one that's old and one that's new. What am I? All right. Go ahead, Sir Maga. Sir Casey Ray is too early. A Bible. The Bible. Very good. Yes. All right. Laurel Hands. Next riddle. I closely resemble the letter T. Lady Kailani, too early. I am a symbol, symbol of the Christian faith. I can be seen in many churches. What am I? Go ahead, Sir Case. The cross. The cross. Very good. Yes, sir. I love this. You guys are doing so good. Riddle. What electronic device did, do we use today that Moses brought humanity from Mount Sinai with the commandments. All right, Sir Case. The phone. Incorrect. What we use the phone to read the Bible? Sir Rashim. Tablets. The tablets. He came back with the tablets containing the commandments from Mount Sinai. Very good. All right, next riddle. Riddle me this, riddle me that. I can be carried but not touched. I have two on the outside and ten on the inside. Everyone wants to catch a sight of me, but I'm kept out of sight. I was lost and found, then found, but now I am lost. I'm in the Bible. What am I? Servant. The Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. Very good. Sir Case, was that what you were going to say? Yes, ma'am. Yes, very good. You guys are so smart. Ark of the Covenant indeed. All right, riddle me this. Riddle me that. I kept him steady and others away. I kept them safe and showed the way. Once thrown down upon the ground, I came alive with a is in sound, I hit the rock as he was told. And that was when the water flowed. What am I? Servant. Moses' staff or rod. All right. Oh. Very, very good. Yes, what sir. Were what were you going to say? Nothing. Okay. Very good. You guys did so good. My God. going to say Moses' stick. Yes, it's still right. It's rod stick or stuff. It's still right. My God, that's so good. I love it. I love it. All right, let's continue. Welcome, Sir Darrell. Welcome. All right. Sign only, phone not included. The newlyweds can come to the phone right now. To leave us a message, simply pick up the phone Wish to wish us well. Okay, so we're going to be using voice messages for these, these couples. All right, listen. Lord has promised me a child, and I doubted. So leave a message until I get my voice back. Sir Case. Elizabeth. Elizabeth and... Zachariah. Remember? And Zachariah. Yes. Remember, it's a, co a couple. So don't Zachariah. just name. Yes. Don't just name the wife, name the husband as well. Very good, you two. All right. Lower hands. All hands. All right. Let's go to the next one. You have reached the king of Babylon. Please leave a message. I am busy divorcing this woman. P.S. Save the date for my next wedding. Sir Case. 
Zachara? No, no, no. Uh, what's his name? Saul? Incorrect. Sir Bent? I don't know the name of the wife, but the king is King Artaxerxes. Xerxes, yes. And who knows the wife that he divorced? Oh, I just remember. Vashita. 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 Yes. So he's either Xerxes or Ahusurus. That's what the Bible calls him. Remember that. Ahusurus. And Vashti. Very good. Very My good. Says Artaxerxes. Yes, it's still him. In 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 um when you go on Google or those historical works, you'll see him as Xerxes, but the Bible names him as Ahusurus. So very good, very good. I love that. All right, let's go to the next one. I am busy having a convo with Gabriel. Dude is an angel and says my wife is pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Please leave a message as I bring her back home. Go ahead, Sir Case. About Jesus, the birth of Jesus. Who is the couple? Who is this person here talking? Um, Jacob and Mary. Mary is correct? Yeah. Who was She's the one? Mary and Joseph. Joseph. Very good. I said Joseph. Um, Jacob, you said it. Maybe uh, okay. by error. Yes. All right. So very good. All right. So let's go to the next one. Please leave a message and I will get back to you. I must see my husband, even though I have not been invited into his court. If I don't call you back, it means sadly I'm no longer in the land of the living. The queen, Sir Bent. Queen Esther. Queen Esther. Yes, sir. Very good. Hallelujah. Please leave a message. My husband, the king, has come back for me, sorting out the mess my tall dad made. Sir Bent. Is that Mikal? Mikal. Mikal, yes. Or Michael. Yeah. Yes, very good. Very good. My God, you all are so very smart. You know the Bible. Hallelujah. And who was our king? Who was our husband? David. David, that's right. All right. So now we're going to be going into social media profile. All right. For this one, I'm going to go a little bit different because I want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity. So I'm going to call some names, all right? I'm going to call some names and these persons are going to have 30 seconds to answer. If they don't answer, then I'll move on to the next person. All right, so I'm going to start with Sir Rashim. Sir Rashim, look at this profile. This is the social media profile of a disciple that is also an apostle. His post, I was a fighter, very aggressive, but loving. Thank God for grace. I work at Kingdom of God to spread the good news and to feed God's people. Who am I, Sir Rashim? All right, not here in Sir Rashim. So I'm Wait. Gonna... It's um Sim 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 Simon the Zealot. Simon the Zealot? No. Is that, uh, Can I go? Uh, one minute, sir. Okay, so we're gonna come, we're gonna come to you. Trust me. We're gonna come to you. I'm gonna go to Sir Cameron. Do you know who this disciple slash apostle is? All right, not here in Sir Cameron. Lady Camellia, do you know who this disciple slash apostle is? All right, what's going on here? Not here in any, in, you guys. I know Sir Case is bubbling up and I'm going to come to you, Sir Case. I'm going to, let me just touch one more person that didn't get an opportunity to go. Lady Kailani, do you know who this disciple slash apostle is? Just why did you pick me? Just <laughs> okay. why? All right, I'll move on, my darling. Just move on and call me back later for another one. 
Okay, my honey bun. All right. So, Sir Case, do you know who is this disciple? Apostle? Peter. Thank you very much. Who is he? Peter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, we're going to run to another one. Guys, don't feel any way to try. If you're wrong, you're just wrong. If you're right, you're just right. All right. Don't feel any way to try. You're trying. All right. Wait, but wasn't Peter a fisherman? Yes, but he loved to fight. So these are clues. Their posts are clues to tell you who they are. Look at it very carefully. He was a fighter. He was very aggressive, but he loved Jesus. Oh, okay. All right. And God told him to feed his people. That's a clue right there I gave you. He was a um, disciple and also an apostle. All right. So now that you guys are figuring out the game, let's go to the next one. The apostle Jesus loved. All right. So I'm going to call on Sir Ben for this one. Sir Ben, who is that apostle that Jesus loved that was? John. All right. He was on Patmos. He was the he was blind, but his with his physical eyes, but his spirit was still seeing. I have a, a type O right there. So thank God you knew who it was anyway. All right. So we're going to Sir Maga. Sir Maga. Who is the apostle with no guile? Very honest, he asked, can any good thing come from Nazareth? And he works for the kingdom of God, spreading the good news and seeking for God's leadership. Who is this apostle, Sir Maga? I feel like it's a bit obvious, but it's Nathaniel. <laughs> I love, I love you so very much. Yes, it is. It is Nathaniel. Very good. Very good. All right. So we're going to be going into these ones. Lady Kehlani, do you feel like you're ready now to come on into the room? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Now, this next Bible character, how many sons did Jacob have? I'm going to say five. All right, Sir Maga, you want to help her? Um, it's twelve. It's either twelve or thirteen. I think it's twelve. All right, a lady Camelia. Do you want to tell him which one is the correct answer? Okay, I see. I see, Sir Bent. Go ahead, Sir Bent. Him, it's three times four, and it's twelve. So yeah, you're right. Beautiful. So the correct answer is twelve. All right. So now we're gonna go back to. Okay, beautiful. All right. So now we're gonna go back to raising the hands. All right, raising the hands. What was the name of Moses's wife? Go ahead, Sir Bent. Zipporah. Zipporah. Very good. Very good. All right. Lower all hands. After Jesus was arrested, which apostle went into the hall to be near him? Sir Bent. Simon called Peter. No, I'm Lady Kehlani. His mom. Or his family? No. Anyone else wants to try? Sir Bent? Was it John? John, the apostle. All right, all right, all right. Yes. So wait, Peter wait, was well, on the Peter outside. Was too, yes, he was on the outside. That's where he denied him. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I hear you trying to answer Lady Esther. That's exactly right. So Peter was on the outside, but John ran ahead of Peter and went inside the hall because he knew somebody there. Very, very good. I love this. The reason why I'm giving these questions is because I recognize that you kids have the capacity to be stretched. And so I'm stretching you and giving you the Bible stories as we go along. So very good. Very good. All right. Who made the coat of many colors? Who made it? Sir Maga. Jacob himself. 
Jacob himself. Very good. Yes. All right. Now we are going to go into. All right, now we're going to guess the Bible character. And as you can see, we're using emojis to do this. All right, let's go. Who is this Bible character? Sir Bent. Zachariah. Zachariah, no. Look again at the emojis. Sir Rashim. No, wait. Is it, is it Mary's husband? No. No, wait. <laughs> Go ahead, sir, Bent. But not able to speak on is confusing, but is it by chance the shepherds? The shepherds? No. Look at the emojis. It is, it's right there in front of you. I promise you all you're going to say, oh, wow. Who wants to try one more time? Go ahead, Sir Maga. Was it baby Jesus? No. Go ahead, Sir Rashim. Moses? No. Go ahead, Sir Cameron. Um, Zacharias? No. Sir Maga? Was it the prodigal son? No, Sir Rashim. Is it um Jesus's cousin? No, I forgot his name. Not no, John. Wait, John. Not John. Oh, I'm gonna give you guys a hint. Look at this particular emoji right here. What's happening in that emoji? Go ahead, Sir Maga. He's blind. He's blind, yes, Sir Maga. I really don't think this is the answer, but is it Job by any chance? No, Job wasn't blind. Go ahead, Sir Rashim. The blind man that Jesus healed. And what was his name? I forgot his name. Sir Ben. No, 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 I know, I know, no, no. Uh, Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus, yes. If you notice, he has a stick and he has a, a cup extended begging. And he's well, what's the, because it's a boy. It's yeah. a baby boy. What, what does that have to do with it? Because it, it, it's kind of like throwing you off. It's showing. Well, it's not showing off. What it's throwing you off. What it's saying is what he said. He said, have mercy upon me. The son of David, sorry. And if you notice, the star of David is there. So it makes. Well, isn't that the oh, I see. Logo? I get it. I get it. I get I'm it. sorry, Sir Mega. Isn't that basically the Israelite logo? Right. So blind Bartimaeus called Jesus the son of David. This is a star of David and a, 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 a blue onesie that would represent a boy right so that's a baby boy the son of david and he is blind and a beggar so it's blind bartimaeus crying out for help to jesus while they were telling him to be quiet that's why you have this uh, emoji here with the, the the stop sign over his mouth a little bit difficult but you guys did figure it out eventually so I have to applaud you, applaud you. All right, so look at this one. Who knows which Bible character this is portraying? Go ahead, Sir Bent. Is it Samson by chance? Not Samson, Sir Maga. Yeah, the three wise men because they were shepherds. No, look again, this is... A Look at the emojis clearly. Sir Bent? Um, what came to me just before I go was, I, I think it's an Isaiah. I don't know how good this is, but it says he 
open not he went he went as a lamb to the slaughter and he opened his word he opened his mouth not a word so yes was jesus was like a lamb to the slaughter that's why you have a lamb a, a shear this is what that they used to shear shave off the clothes of the lamb and there is the no sound open not his mouth very good this was a very, very difficult one. yes so I'm not going to lie. This one was difficult because I did this one for older kids, but I wanted to see how you guys would respond to it. So very good, very good. All right. Who knows what this one is talking about? You have wood, you have a ram, you have fire. Go ahead, Sir Bent. Sir McGaw. Sir McGaw, sorry. Um, Abraham, Abraham taking Isaac up to be sacrificed, but then God provided a lamb, but then God provided a ram to be sacrificed instead. Yes, yes, sir, my God, beautiful, my God, I love it on the first go. Yes, 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 my God, good. All right, now we're going to the next section, name the couple. All right, so listen up real good. Let me finish the question. Then you name the couple by raising your hand. All right, everybody's here. Everybody's ready to jump into this. Sir Case, are you here? Yes, sir. I'm here. All right, Sir Cameron, are you here? All right, not here in Sir Cameron. All right, Lady Camelia, are you here? Yeah. All right, Sir Bent, are you here? Yes, ma'am. Sir Maga. Here and always will be. Awesome. Lady Kelani. Yes, 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 and yes. Awesome. Sir Rashim. Yes. Awesome. Just checking. Okay, so let's go to our next round. Name this couple. Hint. He was a beautiful liar. His name was changed by God, and he was duped into marrying her. Hint, she was hated by her husband. She bore him so many children, yet she died without his love. Who is this couple? Sir Bent. Um, it's Rachel and, or no, it's Leah and, what's his name? Jacob. Beautiful. Yes, it is. My God, you guys are doing so awesome. These are things that were developed for youths and you are getting them. I'm just so excited. My God. All right. Next one. Name this king and queen. Hint. He ruled 127 provinces. He was a Gentile who got drunk a lot and he could not read. He disposed his first wife before marrying his second, who was a Jew. And she called for a three days fast among her people. She dressed up in royal apparel and made her way to court to see her husband without being called. Her cousin raised her as an adopted dad. Who is this couple? Servant. King Xerxes and S. Queen Esther. Very good. Very good. Yes, it is. All right. Let's go to the next one. Name this king and queen. Hint. His obituary, which is his tombstone, dead stone, would read. His last moments were spent in bed with multiple comforters to get him warm. When th that failed, we got him a young virgin. When he did not touch her, we knew he had passed. Hint. Her death tomb would read, her first husband died by conspiracy of her second husband, who also passed from being too cold. Her surviving son is the wisest king to ever live. Who is this couple? Sir Bent. Uh, Bathsheba and King David, or Queen yes. Bathsheba and King David. Beautiful. Yes, it is. All right. Let's go to the next question. Um, question. Name this king and queen. His tombstone would read, 
Here lies the world's most fragile king who had no backbone, so his wife ruled and dominated him. What he wanted and getting him what he wanted even to murder. The wicked have no rest. Her tombstone would read, Here lies the world's most made-up queen. There is no body here because she was eaten by dogs. Man, Elijah, her hand was like you said. I couldn't even with 850 prophets by my side. Who is this couple? Sir Bent. Um, it's Ahab and what's her name? Oh my gosh, no way, no way. What's her name? Jezebel. But I didn't know Ahab didn't have any backbone. Or it wasn't Ahab. No, it wasn't, right? <laughs> Sir Cameron, is he correct? Is it Ahab and Jezebel? I think so. Awesome. It is. It's not literal backbone. It's uh, the, 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 he was like a, a little soft man, a little wimp, you know? So, oh. Isabel dominated. Oh, her. I see. It's a yes. metaphor. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Laurel Hands. Next question. Name this couple. Hint. His email address would look like this. First man, Ash Redman, underscore, gardenkeeper at gmail.com. Her Twitter post would look like this. Beauty, hashtag, first lady, hashtag, never talk to serpents. Who is this couple? Sir Bent. Hashtag Adam, hashtag Eve. <laughs> Sir Maga, is that correct? Hashtag yes. Awesome. I love it. All right, let's go to the next question. Name this king and queen. His voicemail would say, please leave a message at the tone. I am busy getting drunk and entertaining my nobles, so bring my wife. Her voicemail would say, please leave a message at the tone. I am looking at my husband, the king, acting the fool and calling me to be a spectacle. I am a queen and there is no way I am going. Who are they, Sir Maga? Is it David and Nicole? No. Sir Bent? Actually, it's King Xerxes and Vashiti. Yes, Vashti. Very good. Awesome. All right. Next one. Laurel Hands. The headlines of various news outlets would read, Breaking news. One of the East's most powerful men lost his children, businesses, properties in one day. He is in... He is reported to be in bad health, declining daily with no diagnosis. The headlines of various news outlets would read, Wife of prominent businessman who lost everything in one day has left him after his decline. Her last words to him were, Cursed, curse God and die. Who are they, Sir Bent? It's Job. I don't know his wife's name. Job and wife, yes. Yeah, it doesn't say in the Bible, no? It doesn't say. That's correct. Yeah, so, Job right. and wife. Very good. Very good. All right. And that is that. Oh, wow. We have come to the end of our games today. Did you find it to be fun, even though it was challenging? Yes. Do you want I... to? Do... You did? Beautiful. Do you want to do more like these? Yes. Of course I do. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. You guys are truly the best. All right. So we're going to be going into um, our discussion for the day. And we're going to be talking about faith. So we're going to be looking at children of faith. Because we did couples, we did women, we did men. So we're not going to be looking at children of faith. And then we're going to be looking at moments of faith. And we'll end for the day. All right. So. Let us go in again. Welcome, Roberts Brothers. Welcome, welcome. Um, let's see this here. One moment. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. 
know we can share this. I don't know why it's going on like that. I don't know. All right, now we're on the right slide. Okay, so remember last time we were here, we did, um, we spoke, we looked at the, the pictures, we identified who the Bible character was, and we gave a little background on how they exhibited faith. We're going to be looking at that still, and today we're looking at children who had faith, all right? So we're going to go to the first slide. Who knows which Bible character this is? Which child is this in the Bible? Sir Bent. Um, I believe that was Sam. No, no, no. That was, was either Samuel or Joshua. Okay. Anyone wants to say which one this is? Anyone else wants to come in? Sir Rashim? What was what was the question? Sorry. Okay, we were asking who knows who this Bible character is. I see your hand, Sir Maga. Go ahead. Is it Samuel? It is Samuel. Very good. Now, I'm going to ask this question, and I'm going to ask all who think that they have the answer to raise their hand. How did Samuel show his faith? Sir Bent. Uh, so God spoke to Samuel while he was sleeping, I believe, and he, and Samuel thought it was his master, the chief priest, Eli, but Eli, after the third time of Samuel coming to him, told him to answer to a God he didn't really know and have a personal relationship with, and I remember in a video I was watching, he said he could have thought it was a monster. So he was showing faith by doing what was asked. Beautiful. Sir Maga. I think it's I think it's because um he obeyed and did what his master Eli told him and answered God and then got some really interesting news, but some really sad news. And what did he do with that news that he got from God? When God spoke to him, what did he do with it? He transported it to Eli. And did he stop there? Did God stop talking to him there, everyone? No, God continued no. to use him. Ah, and when God continued to speak to him, what did he continue to do? Do what was asked, showing faith in that. Ah, very good. Because he had to add faith. Remember, God was talking to this little boy and he had never experienced God like that. So Eli says to him, I didn't call you. God called you. So say to God, here am I. And he follows that and he says, here am I. And when he answers, God begins to tell him to tell Eli these dreadful things. Now, remember, he was a little boy. He didn't have much understanding about these things. So to say it, it took faith in this, in the fact that it was really God that was talking to him and not his mind or some scary thing. And he not just st stopped there with his faith, but he continued to be obedient, not seeing and understanding, but going and doing what God instructed him to do his faith required him to be obedient and did he fulfill what his faith required yes he did everybody agrees yes yes i agree awesome awesome all right so let's go to the next slide who knows which bible character this is Go ahead, Sir Bent. Was it Naaman? Naaman. And who is the child in this story? Because remember, we're doing children of faith. The Shunammite woman. Was it? Shunammite. The Shunammite woman. Anyone else want? Who spoke to Naaman? Who told him to go and see the prophet of Israel? Anyone knows? Uh, 
I don't believe that. All right. So the story is in 2 Kings verse 5. I'm going to tell you guys about it today. A little Israelite girl, <coughs> sorry, was brought into captivity, which meant that she came over as a slave to Syria. Now, while she's there, she is given into the house of Naaman because Naaman was a captain of the armies of Syria. Now, while she's there, you can tell that she loves him because she says, I wish to God that my master would go to the prophet that's in Samaria and he would heal him of the leprosy. That's what you're seeing on his skin here. And Naaman listened to her, went to the king, told the king of Syria that, and the king wrote him many letters. No, when, oh, I'm sorry, wrote him a letter. Now, when the king wrote him a letter, he took that letter to the king of Israel. The king of Israel, when he heard it, he tore off his clothes and said, does this man think that I am God? Why is he sending a leprous man to me to heal? Now, Elisha heard it and said, send him to me because God is able. And when Naaman goes, who knows what Elisha told Naaman to do to become clean. Go ahead, Sir Bent. Uh, before I, actually, after I answer it, but what he told him to do was there was a, a pond, river there. It was dirty. He told him to wash himself in it. I believe it was either once or seven times, then he would be pure. That's right. And uh, my question was, how was he a commander or someone of high authority if he had leprosy? Wouldn't he have been isolated from the community? No, in Israel, they're isolated from the community. But in Syria, it seems that they're not because he, he has people staying in his house and he is the captain of the army. And he had the right to be able to go in and to see the king of Syria. So it seems that Syria did not isolate them, but in Israel, they are isolated. And so you are absolutely right. They, um, Elisha told him, go and wash in the river Jordan. And was he happy to go and wash in the river Jordan? No, because it was dirty. Ah, so did he do it immediately? After... Uh, hesitations he did. Immediately. Yes, he didn't do it immediately. He left mad. He's like, look at this man. There are so many rivers that are clean and he's telling me to go and dip in this dirty river. I'm not going over there. And the same servants met him and said, if the prophet had asked you to do a hard thing, you would have done it. So why not go and dip? And he dipped seven times. And what happened after he dipped seven times? His leprosy was the, the leprosy left from him. Beautiful. Welcome, Sister Abigail, and thank you for jumping right in. His leprosy left him. What does that say about faith? When you are obedient in faith, what happens? You get positive results. Beautiful. You will get positive results. Whatever it is that you're believing God for, it's going to happen. Very, very good. So, this servant girl. She had faith. Did she say to Naaman that if you go, you may be healed? No, she said it no. with confidence that he will. Ah, you will be healed. So I would to God that you would have gone and seen this prophet. And he did go and he did get his healing. Very good. Who knows who these others are? Daniel and his um and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel's brother. Very good. That's Daniel and Meshach and Abednego and who's the other one? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, yeah. All right. Yes, that is all four of them, known as the Hebrew boys. Now, what are they doing in this picture? Um. They are refusing the the food that they that the people are giving them because um God forbid them to eat to eat those kind of food. Now, why did God forbid them to eat these type of food? Anyone knows? 
Because they are unclean. They are unclean. What else? They are Babylonian. Go ahead, sir, Cameron. Um, they are Babylonian. You, you sound so muffled, I can hardly hear you. I'm sorry. One more time. Um, they are Babylonian. They are Babylonians, yes. And what did the Babylonians do with their food that Israel was not supposed to eat it? They offered it to idols. So you know how you sit around your table and you pray over your food and you ask God to consecrate it? Their food was food that was offered to idols. And so the Israelites were not to eat the things that they ate. Plus, they were given a special diet by God. Remember, God told them not to eat anything that was strangled, that the blood in it, that was not drained out, and a lot of other things. So God gave them a specific diet. So when these boys were rejecting this food, what were they doing? Can you repeat, please? When they were rejecting the Babylonian food, what were they doing? They were, the they were they were standing up. Ah, you guys are so smart. They were they were obeying God and they were standing up for what they what believe. So faith sometimes causes you to take a what? You said it earlier, sir case. When you believe something, it causes you to take a Five letters starts with the letter S, ends with the letter D. Five um, letters that makes one word. Starts with S, ends with D. Stand. A stand. stand. Thank you very much. When you have faith in God, it requires you to take a stand. Remember with Mordecai, when everybody was bowing down to Amon, did he bow to Amon? No, no, he didn't. Awesome. So when everybody else was brought into Babylon as slaves and the king chose the best of the best and they were eating the food, these boys decided I am going to take a stand and not eat this because they believe God. There are times when you have to take a stand because the things that are being asked of you goes against your belief. If you're in school and somebody is asking you to come and fight somebody or bully them, will you do it? Of course no. no. Sir Case? No. No. And I heard the rest of you, Sister Kayla, and I said, of course no, because you take a stance. Now, what if it's something uh, not as dramatic as that? What if somebody wants you to pull a prank on somebody? Do you do it? I don't know. No, I would not. No. Because to pull a prank is acting out a lie. No. So you don't do it. And it, look at how deceptive it seems because everybody is doing it and you can easily say, oh, it was a joke. But the Lord speaks about idle words and actions and to do these things saying you're pulling a prank and you were just kidding you are actually acting out a lie so there comes a time when you have to take a stand and you don't do those things that others are doing because your diet is a word of god our diet is very specific. We have to consume God's words and live by it. We cannot do what the world is doing. The world has a system that says, if you step on my, my toes, I should step on your toes. Is that what Jesus said in his words we are to do? Somebody step on your toe, you step on their toe? No. no. You tell them, why did you do that? Right, you ask them. 
And after asking them and you have that conversation, what do you do? Do you hold a grudge against them or do you forgive them? Forgive them. Very good. You don't have to you don't have to start a whole scene in everybody about um how how that person stepped on your toe and it hurts. Just forgive them. It's not like they pushed you in front of a car. That's right. You see, there are some things that you don't even have to say anything for. It is a petty situation to talk about everything. Because there are times when persons literally did not even see you and may have bumped into you. You don't have to start a fight for that. You can just forgive them and move on because they really did not mean to bump into you. And they honestly probably did not even see you. And even if it was done on purpose, we still have a mandate to forgive. Remember that. Go ahead, Sister Kailani. Okay, so like once I was in class and it was like break time, we were outside with soap in our hands about to wash off our hands. One of my classmates stepped on someone's toe and she pushed him. And then she started a whole, like she started a whole, I don't even, like she started a whole drama over there. Like she was being like, why do you step on my toe? Are you blind or something? Watch where you're stepping. Like she was letting everyone hear that one person just stepped on her toe. And, and, and what are some of the things that came out of that reaction? He stepped on her toe. He didn't do it on purpose. But she embarrassed him, didn't she? Yes, she did. And was that kind to do, everyone? No. No. Just because someone stepped on your toe, you're embarrassing them in front of the whole school. And that is why one person's action can create an entire domino effect if it is not done properly. Let's look at the, the young teenage boy in Jamaica that a younger one in first form was passing by him and stepped on his shoe. And he beat him to a pub to the point where the boy's eyes could not open properly. Do you think that God is pleased with that? God is not pleased. God is looking down on him right now and just being like, wow, I really see your true colors. I just God. do not like you anymore. God still loves him and God knew that he is like that, but God is not pleased with the act. Remember when mom, whenever you do something out of mommy and daddy's will, Mommy and daddy don't like what you do, but they still love you. However, you will be punished, right? Is everybody with me? Yes. With you. So even though this little boy did what he did, God doesn't stop loving him, but he will be punished because what he did was just inhumane and God doesn't like that. And so he still has the opportunity to come into repentance so that the seed of wickedness that he has sown in that act will not become fruits in his life, but only if he will repent. And so faith, Again, your faith in God can have you take a stance to do the right thing, even though it is not the most popular thing to do. Because I'm pretty sure based on the friends that this young man had, it was popular for him to act tough. And it was not popular for him to let something slide. But you know what? 
The truth is, if he had let it slide, he would not be in legal troubles and he would not have God not like what he did. And so faith causes us to take a stand that places us in a righteous position and causes God to be pleased with us. Who remembers a time when Jesus' faith caused him to take a stand? Who wants to tell us those different instances? Go ahead, Sister Kehlani. Oh. I was going to tell you something else about, like, how a little girl threw a baby off a three-story building. Whoa. He obviously had to die. But um, that little girl should be in jail right now. Whoa. And God is really not pleased with that. Yes, he surely is not pleased with that. Surely is not pleased. So let me ask you, who remembers any time in the scripture when Jesus took a stand because of his faith? Is there any time when Jesus took a stand? Um, um was when he was in the in the wilderness in its forty and 40 days and 40 nights fasting and the devil came to him, tempting him to command the stones that they should be made bread and use the word of God to overcome. Beautiful, Sister Abby. That's exactly right. Go ahead, Sir Case. No. Go ahead, Sir Cameron. Jesus took a stand for almost all his life. For almost all his life. That's true, Sir Cameron. Because he had to stand against people criticizing him. He had to stand against people calling him Beelzebub and saying that he had all sorts of spirits because he was doing what was right. What about when he went into the temple and he, he, he twined that, that whip together and started to run them out? Did he take a stand there? Yes. yes. I see yeah. <laughs> Sorry, because they were doing things that were not pleasing in the temple. They were making the temple a place of money exchange and uh, fraud, extortion, because they were charging way more than what was needed. And so righteous indignation stood up in him and he chased them out because it's, it's really a place of sacrifice and prayer. How dare you come in there and make it a den of thieves? People who want to make a profit from other people. And they were the leaders, mark you, of Israel. And so this is how these boys are now separating themselves from others because they are taking a stand. Boys and girls, your faith can separate you from others because you stand for Jesus. Samuel's faith separated him from others because the Bible says from that day on anything God told him, it happened. None of his words fell to the ground. It means that as soon as it was spoken, God gave a result. Go ahead, Sister Kailani. Okay, so like when I was in grade one, mm -hmm. I had a classmate like Anytime someone would take their things back from her, she would randomly start to attack them. Even if they like don't do anything, don't like just like they do not take anything back from her. Like it's just a normal school day. They don't do anything. They're standing their seats. <gasps> She just has to get out of her seat, walk right up to the classroom and start beating them up for no reason. So what was she acting? She would even pull your hair and she will pull it out. But what was she acting like? Oh, I don't know. Like she was acting really crazy. She was acting like a bully. And that yeah. may be because there are other things that are affecting her in her surroundings. See, well, children, her parents are taking good care of her. I don't know what's happening. 
Because what it doesn't have to be her parents, my darling. It can be other children that are bullying her and nobody knows. Listen, Everyone if, knows to just stay away from her. No one is like bullying her. She will even beat up grade six students even if they don't trouble her. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you guys are our kids. So there's a lot of deep things that goes on with other children that you won't immediately know. But remember this. Not everyone that looks like they have a very good home has a very good home. Remember that. Some people have other things that affects them and they can't tell others. And so they battle it up and it makes them angry. So there are times when people will have angry responses that may not have to do with you. I am not making an excuse or a behavior. I'm saying that may be um, one situation too she may just very well just be a mean little girl that wants what is not hers and she has not been taught properly the consequences and reward system of not taking what doesn't belong to you and learning to accept accountability over the things that belongs to her you understand so there are more than one circumstances that can apply to this child why she might be behaving like that However, you have to try not to let these people change you from being who you are, even though they may be like that. Because people even, say nasty things all the time. Even our grade one teacher thought that, that some demon was inside of her, of how crazy she was acting. Okay. We're not going to list that over here because we don't want to get anybody in trouble, but Remember this, that Jesus had persons who acted like that little girl who were bullies. They eventually came and they did put hand on him. They whipped him, they beat him, and they crucified him. But he never stopped being who he was. And that is an example to us, that our faith helps us to stand regardless of what comes against us. Remember that. This is what I want you guys to remember always, that as children, there are going to be things that challenges your faith, comes to test you and to change your character. But you have to stand for what you say you believe in, even when it is not popular with everybody. Remember that. Okay, everyone? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sister Kenyon. All right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So let's move to the next slide. Who is this young man in this one? Let me give you a clue. This is in the temple in Jerusalem. Go ahead, Sir Bent. That's Jesus in his youth. That's Jesus at 12 years old. And what was he doing in the temple in Jerusalem? Teaching or doing his father's business. He was having a reasoning with the lawyers and the doctors. Now, the Pharisees had a sect that was called the Sandedrian Council. The Sandedrian Council were lawyers. They wrote the legal writings of the land based on what was in the Torah. And these were the people Jesus was sitting among. So you would have people like Paul. You would have people like Gamaliel. These are the different persons that Jesus was sitting with and having conversation. And the Bible said he asked them questions, but he also spoke and they were amazed at his level of understanding at only 12 years old. Let me ask you now, what was Jesus' faith doing here? First of all, did his parents... Go ahead, Sir Case. I'm asking what you say. What? Did his parents know that he was in Jerusalem? No. no. So his faith took him on whose business? God's business. Ah, number two is faith knew that some of the things they were saying 
carried more depth? Did he leave it at what they said or did he reason even further with them and cause them to become odd? Even more further. Ah, so you're I think Go ahead, go ahead, Sir Cameron. Um, I think the evil can confuse them at one point, let them question certain stuff. Because at the level that he was talking, they started to be wondering. That's right. Jesus at 12 years old confused them at one point because you know what? Your faith is supposed to take you deeper. As an adult, what did Jesus do most of the times when it came to nighttime and early morning? Anyone has any, any idea? In the nighttime, to go, going towards the morning, what was Jesus always doing? Pray. Thank you, Sister Abigail. Say it one more time for me. He was praying. He was praying. The Bible talks about him going to a mountain and he would pray until the morning. So his faith, it didn't just start because he's an adult. He was always like that. He was always praying. He always had an appetite to know more. Okay? So your faith is supposed to grow. Your faith is supposed to grow. grow. The Bible speaks about having an increase of faith. And it is God that gives to every man a measure of faith. Therefore, it is God that will increase it for us. So our faith needs to grow and it grows only when we are connected to God through prayer, fasting, reading the word. Let me ask you this. As little children, does that mean that you guys can't fast? No. Is only sister Abigail believe that as little children you can fast? Yes, you can fast. It doesn't yes, matter what age. Ah, thank you so very much. So as little children, you can and you really should fast, even if it is just for two hours. Because what it does is to bring you into a deeper connection with the Lord and to learn how to go into intercession, prayer, for others, the persons that are oppressed, the persons that are captivated, the persons that are bound. So as little children, for your faith to grow, what do you need to do? Prayer and fasting. And what else? Read your Bible. Ah, so prayer is like water. Reading the Bible is like bread, right? And fasting is like cleansing, washing yourself. Remember that. Go ahead, Sir Bent. Somewhere in the Bible, Jesus says that and when um, the disciples, they couldn't cast out a specific type of demon, and Jesus did it. He said that these kinds go about only by prayer and fasting. Ah, but what was the rebuke he gave them first? Did he say, you, you don't fast and pray? What was the rebuke when they couldn't cast out the devils? Go ahead, Sir Bent. I Lady, don't remember. Lady Abby? Um, because of their little faith. Because they did not have enough faith. And then he gave the remedy. This type come by prayer and fasting because through prayer and fasting, you're developing faith because guess what? Everything happens in the spiritual realm first before it does the physical. So you are going to have to pray against these spirits of diabetes, of blindness, of epilepsy, of dumbness, of deafness, of blindness because they bind God's people. They keep God's people captive. So you pray against them. And then now when you come to see them, you believe God that he can do it and you speak in the name of Jesus and it happens because it is the will of God. 
But the whole thing is that your faith is going to grow. The more you pray, the more you fast, the more you read God's word, because reading God's word, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word. Beautiful. Anyone else wants to say anything else about um, faith here before we go to the next slide? Sir Jaden, you have something to say? No. All right. So we're moving on to the next slide. We are now going to be looking at moments of faith. So these are instances where a lot of people came together and had to believe. All right. And this is where we're going to close tonight. So let's go. Which moment of faith is this? Um, When Joshua was going around the wall of Jericho. Awesome. Sir Bent, I saw your hand. You want to go in and begin to talk about the faith? Um, they had faith in the situation because from the without knowing God and having a personal relationship, the outside view of walking around a city for six days, one time each day, and on the seventh day, seven times. One, that's exhausting, and number two, that's just ridiculous. So they had faith in God that he was going to do what he said he was going to do based on past experience with crossing the Red Sea and other moments. Amen. Lady Abigail? They um, had faith because um, when, when they were coming around the wall of Jericho, the wall people, of Jericho. people were missing them, people saying that the, the them. wall was torn and they couldn't. Um, the wall could break down because of how high and strong the, the wall was. Very good. It was a fortified wall. So like Sir Joshua said, it, it was exhausting and it looked ridiculous. They're saying, what? look at them. But nonetheless, they were Cameron. Go ahead, Sir Cameron. Um, um so First of, first of all, I'm walking around the wall of Jericho. Is just, for one for one time each day, that doesn't make any sense. Because to them, all they're doing is saying, I'm blowing a trumpet and just walking around. Walking around, marching around. So, one time, for the week of the seven days, and on the seventh day, second time. So, to me, to me, it really doesn't make sense, but yeah, but the faith that they had right there shows that no matter what, as Brother Ben said already, because of past experiences, they say, you know what, just, just do it because they may not, because they don't know what's going to happen. Because they know that God is going to come through for them and the level of obedience they have from God and Joshua as their leader. All right, Lady Abby. Go ahead, Sister Abigail. Um, I didn't mean to read it. Okay. Now, let me ask this question. For the first six days that they went around the city, did they blow the trumpet or make any sounds? Uh, yes. Sir Bent? No, they didn't. They were strictly told to be silent until the seventh day. They were strictly told to be silent. So what if somebody wanted to eke up? Better hold it. They had to hold it until they had walked around the walls. I have a question. Yes. How did it go with the bathroom? Ah. So in the military today, do you think that when soldiers go to stand in conflict. They want to use the bathroom? No, their adrenaline would. So they them too. And also, they do it prior to. Ah, so they do it prior to, and they are trained to deny 
the luxuries of their body. So if they want to pee, they know how to hold it for a very long time. That is how Marines are trained. That is how SEALs are trained. And that are that is how special service soldiers are trained. They go through these rigorous trainings where they are able to stand up for hours on end without scratching, peeing, or going anywhere. They know how to contain themselves. Go ahead, Sir Bent. Did they bring food with them? Like a lunch break? No, none of that. No. They did not. Lady Abby? Um, I know that's um, in the military force are so good when they are going to war, sometimes they don't even brush their teeth. That's um, right. And they don't eat for a day. It's my that's right. You know, specifically the Marine, they have like maybe two meals over a 55 hour span. And the meals that they have are meals ready to eat. So for Israel, they're just walking around Jericho once. They don't have the luxury to bring food. And they got up very early. So they are walking around, then come back to the camp. When you come back to the camp, you can eat. And you don't eat and sit around and don't look because they are in a fort. So they have to keep watch while eating. And that is why... um. Joshua commanded them to prepare victuals. The victuals were like meals ready to eat that came in little packets, right? And they, they took portions, but it was like a big old meal they were eating the way that it was packed with nutrients and proteins and vitamins and all those things, right? So these people's faith made them have discipline. So that's another level to faith. Faith carries with it a discipline and the discipline that they were having was it their own discipline it was god's god. who instructed them to walk around jericho the way that they were going god and who gave them the order in which the priest should go the Levite, uh, the Levite should go, the army should go, the rear guard should go and stuff like that, the elders and stuff. Who gave them that order? God. Joshua. God. God. God did through God. God. Yes. So faith carries a discipline or an order, and that is a God discipline or a God order or a God principle. So when you have faith in God, you need God's words to direct you. And that's why it comes back again that without the word of God, you're not having any faith because it is the word of God that is going to move you to believe what he is saying and to do what he says in the order he says the way that he says. So remember this, that faith carries a discipline order or a principle okay everyone you all get it i understand yes yes is everybody still here yes yes, yes. Still here. yes. Um, yes. beautiful 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 now does anybody else wants to add Anything else about the faith that Israel had when they walked around Jericho and, and won the victory and the walls fell down? Do you want to add anything else about their faith? Um, that, um, wait, what was I going to say? It slipped my mind. All right. If you remember, at any time, you can still interject and say. All right, so let's um, go ahead. Not really about their fate, but um, it's um about how they saved Rahab and some of their family. Mm -hmm. How um Rahab asked asked of them to save her and her family, even though they are going to destroy the city. That's right. That's right. And we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Well, very good observation, Sister Abby. Wonderful. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Who knows what this is? 
men lapping water like dogs while others are catching the water and drinking from their hand and others are making yes. fun and looking. Gideon. Awesome. It is a war of? Gideon. 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 No, the men that were lapping the water. Who wants to tell us? Tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Let's go. Who wants their to drink? Their drink looks like they're drinking water. Mm -hmm. What else? Okay, so they're drinking water like they're wild animals. Ah. But some are just drinking like pleasant people. Very good. All right, um, Sir Bent. What I observe is that some are being careless and they're just plunging their faces into the water, basically. And some are being watchful because the enemy can be surrounding them at any time. Okay, whose mic is unmute? Okay, let's move them. Okay. All right, that's what you see, Sir Bent. All right, Lady Shantia. What's going on over here? Um, the man that laughs like a dog shall go to the war. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Lady Abigail. I'm not sure if I'm seeing that, but it looks like they're being mocked. That's right. Someone's mocking them. But which ones were taken to the war? The ones who hunted. The ones that were being mocked. Thank you. Because when you go in warfare, there's no fanciness. You don't have time to be so civilized that you're taking water and drinking. Because the enemy will come upon you and kill you. But the ones that were lapping like a dog, look at what they were doing. They were turning their eyes to the, the right and turning their eyes to the left. So the enemy could not come upon them suddenly. If you thought you were coming upon them suddenly, their peripheral view would see you and they would attack you immediately. So that is how God cut down an army of over 30,000 men to 300. Go ahead, Sister Abigail. Sorry about that. No problem. No need to be sorry, my darling. Go ahead, Sir Case. I'm not saying anything. Okay, sir. Case. All right. Anyone else wants to say anything before we continue I, talking? Uh, um, at, uh, what just came out to me was in war, don't you have like while someone's covering you, like while you're taking a rest or drinking? So wouldn't they be okay using their hand? Well, in this instance, Remember, God told Gideon that you have too much man. And in the first place, Gideon is thinking over 30 man is 30,000 men is not enough. God cut that down to it got cut down after he said, if there is anyone here that is fearful, because fear is the opposite of faith, over 22,000 left. But God said it's still too big. So the next challenge that God did, and this is this is all the army is set up, you know, don't believe when you go to get tested for the military, you just go through one training and that's it. No, there's a series of physical fitness and tests and trials that you go through until you get to who is chosen as the elite. And that's why you have the Navy SEALs. Those are the ones that are more um, stronger and withstand certain things above the norm. Right. That is why in the Marine, you have certain level of Marines because they are able to uh, test on top. In your class, you have scholar students, you have honor students and those different things because they test at a different level. So this is what is going on. God says, have them go by the stream. The ones who lap like a dog are the ones who will go into war. Because you're going to go with 300 men. You don't have time to have a battalion. They're all going to need to be on the watch. They are all going to need to be alert. You understand now, Sir Bent? I understand, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So these ones that were so polished, they couldn't go to the war. And that is why, listen, there are times when you go into prayer and it seems like everybody is just speaking in tongues and under, you know, the anointing and just uh, rebuking and because you have come up suddenly upon a warfare. So everyone is engaged. Okay. And then there are other times when you have intercessory prayers happen and one person just starts to really pray and the atmosphere just gets quiet because the Lord is getting ready to bring something prophetic to his people. Right. So different circumstances cause for different things. But in this instance, these 300 men are men of faith because these men are men that are vigilant and watchful. These men's guard are set up and they are ready for war. They don't need to be trained what to do and what not to do because their faith is at that level where they are like scholars, right? So here it is that the ones that lap like a dog were not the ones that were looking in the water, but the ones that were looking around to make sure no one was coming upon them suddenly. All right. So the old war of Gideon was one that was God centered and one that required people that were watchful. So your faith doesn't just require you to do things God's way, but you need to be watchful. Does everybody understand that? Yes, miss. Yes, yes. Awesome. Awesome. Does anybody want to say anything further about, uh, Gideon and the 300 men that went against thousands and God still let them win. All right. Nobody has anything else to say. So we're going to move on to the next slide. And I want to say welcome to everyone that has been coming on. The Lord God bless you and welcome. Now, what scene is this? <sighs> Um, when the spies when when, when Rehab let down the spies when Rehab let down the spies when the spies went to to is um to to Jericho, Sir Jamal. I'm not hearing you, Sir Jamal. You're not hearing me. I'm hearing you now. It was a wall. It was a wall. Okay, thank you. Lady Shantia. When we have let the spies. Very good. Journey. Yes, you are all very right. Now, let me ask this. What did the spies go to do in Jericho? To look at uh, um, what is in the land. To look at. Yes. To, to look at what's in the land. Sir Isaac, you were saying something? To, to, to suspect something. To spy out the land, yes. Lady Shantia? Spy out the land. Yes. Sir Cameron? To find out how many men that um the the on the country stuff on the condition of them. There you go. They went for military intel against Jericho, so they needed to know about Jericho's army and how the land was to spy it out to to look over it and get a clearer understanding of what is going on. Very good. Now, who is that person that is letting them out of the window? Rahab. 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 And how does Rahab tie in with these two spies? She, uh, like, you know how they met? Or... Yes. Oh, um, it so happened to be that they went for coverage to her because um, she was a harlot. They went to her and she hid them for a amount of time until the coast was clear. And they made a truce and I swear under the God's name to each other. Beautiful. 
Lady Shantia? Rahab let them make a covenant with her. That's right. So she met them because they chose her house, which wasn't just a, a house. It was a place where they were doing all a tree. And so it was like, it was kind of like a little motel or a little hostel that they went to, right? And in going there, they encountered Rehab, who is the owner and the operator of that place. And she immediately knows what they have come to do, and she hides them. Now, after hiding them for a while and making this covenant with them, what was the condition of the covenant that she made with them? Um, it was that um, that when, because she knew, she knew, uh, that's how faith ties in. She knew that God's people were going to come and take their land because it was destined to be theirs. And she said that she would keep quiet and not tell anybody about their coming if they promised that when they came, they would save her and her family. Beautiful. Sir Cameron? Um, just to add what you said, um, she made a covenant to save her family, her and her family, and all the things that she had inside of her house, all they belong to. That's right. Everything that belongs to all of them. Very good. Lady Shantia? I wish they make a covenant with her that when they come to destroy the land, they would save her and her family. That's right. So the conditions of the covenant is this. I am going to spare your life. I will not tell anybody your business, but you have to spare my life and my family and everything that belongs to us when you come back for the land. Very good, guys. I love that. Now, let me ask this question now. Okay? What caused Rehab to believe that these men would do what they said? Go ahead, Sir Benz. Because the they told her... Um, they made a plan in advance to when this happens. They told her to leave the scarlet rope there. That, that red rope, yes. Sir Jamal? They, they told her that she was not in fear. She was to have no fear, yes. Uh, Lady Abby? Because she heard about the great things that um that God did that the God of Israel did for Israel and that they were always winning wars. Beautiful. How did our faith come? Because of the great um things she heard about Israel. Hearing. So she heard and she believed and that is why she had all hope that they would keep this covenant. Her faith was activated by what she heard. Did she see them coming through the Red Sea from, from, from Egypt? No. She probably wasn't even born then. Ah, she heard. My God Almighty, and you're right, sir, Ben. She probably wasn't even born. But when she heard it, her faith got activated. Were we alive when Jesus Christ was walking this earth and died for our sins? No. No. No, we were. The word of no. salvation. What happened? We believed and we. Yeah, we believed. We just believed. We had faith. And because it proves that Jesus was real and the Bible, based on the Euphrates drying up, other stuff, landmarks and locations. Sorry. But did we go and check those things when we heard the word of salvation? No. The message of salvation is preached. Do we go and go look on internet to prove the valid validity of the word? Or is it that our faith gets activated and we immediately give a response? Our faith is activated and we immediately give a response, yes. Beautiful. Go ahead, Sister Shantia. Go ahead, my darling. Let me help you because you're still muted. 
Sister Shantia, you may go ahead. All right, not here now. Go ahead, Sir Bent. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. This just came to me. I know it's kind of weird, but mm -hmm. another way that not Rahab, but the spies had faith in Rahab was because they trusted her enough to go down the scarlet rope because when they went down, Rahab could have easily dropped it because based on where you told us, the location of her house is, they would have died. The hills of the, the, the hill, yes. They would have died, yeah. That's right. That's why they had to come down via a thread. You know, Serpent, we are going to even look some more at their faith but let us let us look at Rahab's faith because what does Rahab represent? The church. The church. And so the conditions of Rahab's covenant with them, what did it say? Where did she have to be? Under the scarlet thread or the scarlet thread had to be hanging from her house, which would represent the blood and her house is the church. So they so, had to be in the church. Awesome. So did our family need to stay where they are or did everybody need to come into the one building? Everybody, all their positions, every single thing. Awesome. And did they wait until they think the spies are going to return or did they have to move in immediately? Immediately. immediately. Because they didn't know when Israel was coming back. So they had to oh. go to the and stay safe and not leave because oh. Israel can't we have to be out. under the blood because we don't know when God's come. I see what you're saying. I love that servant. Unmute and say it one more time. What must people do? We must be under the blood because we don't know when God's coming back. So you must put on the name of Jesus. Repent of your sins and stay under the blood because you don't know when Jesus is coming back. And in order for you to make it in with him, you need to stay in his body. And his body is what is it? It's not the four walls. The four walls are known as sanctuaries or temples that we go to to worship. But the true body of Christ is staying in Jesus Christ. And you stay in Jesus through faith and another word that starts with O. What is that word? Obedience. Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much. Go ahead, sir Jamal. Okay. Sand is done. All right. Now we're going to look at the faith of these two spies. When they went into the house of Rahab, did they know who Rahab was? No. Not at the moment, no. But based on no. what she was wearing and what garments, yes. So when they had conversation with her, what made them believe what she was saying? One, because they, she hid them. And two, because they said, she said, um, oh yeah, just came back to me. She was... um. Since she was a harlot, she had a way with words and people, so she knew a lot of things. Very good. But there's one vital reason why she they, 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 they trusted what she said, because she received them. What does the Bible say about receiving strangers because we may receive what unawares? Was it blessings? Five letters starts with A and with L. In here, no, 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 no. Angel. Oh, angels. Really? Yeah. Where's that? So the Bible tells us to entertain strangers because thereby you may entertain angels unaware. So in this case, these men are operating like angels. They have come to do the work of the Lord. Rahab being now this one who is in faith and is going to be a part of the church, identifies them, receives them, believes the work of God. And as a result, she is brought into an experience that the rest of Jericho is not brought into. 
This happened to Lot when the angels came to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. This also happened to Jacob who wrestled with the angel and his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. So now these men's these men faith is in the fact that she received them, not because she know, know them, but because she received them. Remember when Gabriel went to, to, to Zachariah? Zachariah started to talk to the angel, right? So the angel could deliver the message of God. However, his lack of faith caused him to become what? Mute. Mute. Now, when the, the same angel went to Mary, Mary received him wholeheartedly. What happened to her immediately? She conceived. She was pregnant. Elizabeth also received the angel. What happened when Elizabeth heard Mary's voice? The baby leaked in our womb. Received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Ah. So there is something when you receive the word of God. When you receive the word of God in faith, something has to happen. It is not all the time that we have angelic um, visitation with angels from heaven. Sometimes we have it from persons that operate under the will of God. And they are not always going to look like the ones that we want to accept. Before I got saved, God used a madman to talk to me. That was God's angel ministering to me. Though it is somebody that I have known, God used him in that specific capacity to minister to me. And the word was taken in my spirit, received by faith, and so it had substance in me. So I'm saying to you today, as the church, there are some times when God will send strangers in our midst. They may not dress like us. They may not talk like us. They may not act like us. But the word may be coming from God. So when you go tomorrow to church, you may see somebody that looks very lowly and they may start up a conversation with you and they start saying some things to you that is really touching your spirit and you know that it is God talking to you. Start beginning to bless God for them. Don't receive persons because they are the bishop, they are the evangelist, they are the prophet, they are the teachers. But receive them because they are the servants of God. This is what this whole moment of faith is. It is not just about the church and being pulled out when a time of destruction is going to come. I know your faith will cause you to be in the body of Christ and under the blood of Jesus, but it is also about learning how to entertain strangers that have come in the name of the Lord. Does this make sense to you, boys and girls? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, I was just about to say, is it yes, beautiful? Beautiful, beautiful. Sir Joshua, I love all you caught on to that so very quickly. My God. We are to stay. And I want to say this once more for anyone that's on Facebook and on YouTube and that's not yet saved. There is a call to come into the Lord. Because believe this, that the Lord is coming back again and we don't know when. But you better make sure that you are in him by putting on his name in water baptism, repenting of your sins, receiving the Holy Ghost, and staying obedient and faithful. For we don't know when his appearance may be, but we know that it is very soon. Because based on his word, through which the same faith comes, he has instructed us about the times and seasons. And he has always also instructed us in how a man can be saved. 
And again, it is by hearing this word and having faith, we come into obedience and do according to his word. Because these spies are going to leave with confirmation for Joshua and Israel that indeed God has given them the land. Remember that. All right, let me see. I don't think we have any more slides. Oh, yes, we do have one more. All right. We're going to end with this one tonight. What, where is this? Who are these people? What moment of faith is this? Do oh, you know? can I go? Yes, sir. Go okay. ahead, sir, case. I don't remember the name of the man, but can I tell you what I remember from him? I remember um, these were dangerous peoples that did this man something bad, and God sent, sent, told him, if you don't let them repent, I will destroy this place. In Very good. Very good. From you telling the story, I know that you know exactly what it is. Anybody has gotten a clue to say what this is? The day of Pentecost? No, not the day of Pentecost. Um, It's the time when their heart was pricked and in Nineveh. Yes. And they, they went on fasting with the, the animals and all that. Yes, there you go. So this is the city of Nineveh. What are they doing here? Yeah, fasting. Repenting, fasting. fasting and repenting. Repenting through fasting. Very good. And thank you, Sir Case. You, you knew it. You knew it. I love that. Love that. Go ahead, Sir Jamal. They're praying. They're praying. Good, Sir Cameron. Um, the king told them, the king of Nineveh told them to go into a state where there is a whole period of repentance because when Jonah went to finally, after when he was reached on the bed of the world, he went to Nineveh and he gave the word that the city would be destroyed. He gave the word of God because God came down inside of um, Jonah and gave the revelation unto the king. So, yeah, so when he told, told the king about that information, the king sent the town, the whole entire city, into like a state of, what we are referring to, a state of detention and fasting. Beautiful. Lady, Lady um, Shantia, go ahead. They were praying for their bad ways. Yes, they were praying a prayer of repentance so their bad ways to be changed. Yes. Lady Abigail, I saw your your oh go ahead, sister the, um Shanti, if you're not done. Okay, sister Abigail, you had your mic open. Did you want to say something? No, miss. Okay. So what was the word that Jonah brought to Nineveh? Um, what was your question? Go ahead, Sister Abby. That in 30 days, if they do not repent, the, um, the city will be destroyed by God. So the city would have been destroyed, but was it 30 days? I mean, 40 days. Awesome. 40 days. In 40 days, this city, and was it just the city alone? Uh, no. Everything in the city, right? Including the king. So everything in this city in 40 days is going to be destroyed. That was the word that, that Jonah brought. Yet 40 days. And this city, which means everything in it and its walls, is going to be destroyed. Go ahead, Sir Jamal. They went around the Jericho walls. No, this is not Jericho. This is Nineveh. Um, go ahead, Lady um, Shantia. Go 
Okay. All right. So our hand was done. It may have been a mistake. So yet 40 days, they're going to be destroyed. The walls are going to be destroyed. Now, what was the response to that word from the king? I know Sir Cameron said something before, but I want to see who is paying attention. What did the king say after this word came out of Jonah's mouth and it reached to his ears? What did he say? He said that he said that all of Nineveh should not should put on sackcloth and and repent and fast. That's right. And was it just the people? No, it was the animals and the they babies. had to put the animals on fasting too. Yes. Because the, the, the message of death came to everything in the land. So baby, adults, um, elders, animals, everyone was on fasting. Now, when you hear a word and you do what you, in response to what you hear, what is that called? Obedience. Obedience. And what causes you to be obedient? Your faith. Faith because you believe the word. Remember, the king didn't see Jonah, but he heard what Jonah said. And immediately he believed that this is God. And so he remembered that there was a king of Israel that humbled himself and fasted. And his father and a bunch of his army died. So he decides, I'm going to follow suit, suit and we're all going to fast, but we are going to ask God to have mercy. And God surely would have mercy. So, when you hear the word of God um, and you believe, your faith causes you to be what? Productive. Same. Starts with O. Obedient. 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 One more time, I want to repeat this. When you hear the word of God and you believe it, your faith causes you to be what? Obedient. Obedient. So when a person is disobedient, are they standing in faith? No. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit, was it faith they were standing in? No. No, no. Doubt. Doubt caused them to become disobedient and listen to the serpent and not God. So whenever you hear the word of God and you believe, it causes you to be obedient. So when the message of the gospel is preached and if somebody says that they believe it, it will cause them to be obedient. And if they're not, not yet saved, then they will want to be saved. And if they are saved, then it's talking about uh, um, girding up our loins and changing our ways to be more pleasing unto God, you will be obedient and come in repentance much like Nineveh. So the word of God moves you to faith. Faith moves you to obedience. Always remember that. You cannot say, I believe God, and you're disobedient. If you believe God, you must do what God says you are to do. That is all. You show him that you love him and you believe him. That's what his word says. And so tonight we want to end here. That again, your faith grows. And it grows in prayer, fasting, reading the word. But in addition to that, faith must follow God's order, principles, and discipline. And on top of it, faith moves you to obedience. All right? I hope that we all remember these things and that we can share them with others. All right? So we have come to the end of talking about faith. Was it a good session today? Did everybody enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. I loved it. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. I don't have anyone to share it with. I'm a lonely kid.
Oh, don't worry, my darling. Eventually, you'll have somebody to share it with. All right? But the most important part is you getting it. This is what Jesus said to, to, to Peter. Peter, when you are converted, convert the, the, the brethren. So the work of God starts in us first, Sister Chantilla. And then it touches other people's lives. And that's why you have to first believe before you can tell somebody else about God. All right. So whatever God is doing now, he's going to make you, Sister Shantia, fat in the spirit. And then he's going to bring persons and you're going to be able to share the gospel. Because I tell you this, you are a little evangelist. Don't ever forget that. All right. Okay, Miss. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to ask somebody to close us in prayer. Go ahead, Sister Kailani. Lord, I thank you for this wonderful day. I thank you for giving us our food. I thank you for giving us our pain. I thank you for giving us people who really care about us. I thank you for making us and giving us the education, the wisdom, and the knowledge. I thank you for giving us everything. I thank you for giving me my own baby sister. I thank you for giving me my own uncle and and all the family members in my family. I thank you for every nice thing you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I love it. All right. So listen up. Evangelist Coda, are you able to unmute and to come in and to leave a word with our little ones? I'm so sorry that I wasn't as active as I should be, but I'm very tired from last night's service. But I am really impressed. Um, I think it's Brother Joshua that said something about rape, um, rehab that really grabbed my attention. God bless you all. I love you all dearly. And I encourage you all, continue to be a beacon of light. May God bless you. And God bless you too, Lady Mitchell. God bless you. God bless you. All right, all right. So the Lord God bless you, everyone. Thank you all for coming out. May the rest of your week be blessed and the glory of God be upon you all. God bless you. Love you all. Let's unmute and say, good night, Facebook. Good night, YouTube. We'll see you on tomorrow and the new week. Good night, Facebook. 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 Awesome, awesome.